What does tennis and post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury have in common? If I had asked you what does football and PTS and TBI have in common, you could perhaps see that relationship more easily. I'm gonna connect the dots in a few minutes. When I was in high school, I certainly considered myself compassionate and caring. I participated in various volunteer and do good efforts, whether teaching in a summer program for inner city youth or my Sunday school, or as an active participant in other local charitable events. But I would never have dreamt of starting a nonprofit. I wouldn't have had the wherewithal or perhaps the confidence and determination to push through any resistance that I might have encountered, or maybe I just thought that was for adults, not youth. There are some teens who have such a strong pull and are so determined that they are not dissuaded by naysayers or any obstacles they encounter. Today you will meet a former graduate student of mine who was so deeply moved by what happened on September 11th, 2001. At the age of 14, he refused to sit still and not only did he make a commitment, but has made and continues to make an incredible impact through a team of dedicated youth collaborators and veteran mentors among advisors and supporters to now share that his idea that became a reality has raised over 100,000 for veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury. And I believe actually the program has grown much beyond that. You'll hear about that in a few minutes. Points for Patriots connects youth and veterans together for a life-changing experience that culminates in a fundraiser that teaches lifelong skills along with building lifelong relationships while positively impacting those adversely impacted by PTS and TBI. Welcome to Small and Gutsy, our podcast featuring nonprofits and social impact organizations under $10 million. My name is Dr. Laura Whitcoff, and I'm excited and proud to be your host. We hope you'll love the stories as much as we do, and perhaps you will find needed services, a job, volunteer, invest in, or donate. Please pass along any valuable information you hear today to others and send me the name of any organization you'd like featured at lwhitcoff at gmail.com. That's two T's and two F's. Points for Patriots started when founder Michael Schumer was just 14 years old, having been deeply impacted along with hundreds of millions of us by 9-11. Some of us jumped into action and that describes Michael. Having a love and aptitude for tennis, he envisioned participating in fun sports competition as fundraisers to raise both awareness and money for veterans organizations to improve the circumstances of those who defend our country. Hence the first event, a round robin tennis tournament in his hometown of West Hampton Beach, New York, where he raised $15,000 for the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund. Over the following four years, he ran tournaments raising over 40, Thousand. This concept evolved into the program that exists today, one of partnership that embodies trust, learning, hope, and growth, and building new friendships. Points for Patriots provides the foundation for Patriots Fellows to build an athletic fundraiser in their community alongside veteran mentors to raise money for military families in need. And along the way, fellows and mentors learn lifelong lessons in wellness, social entrepreneurship, and connectedness. Their long-term vision is to engage young people with veteran mentors in all 50 states. They are currently in New York, California, and Illinois, the three states where Michael has spent his youth, college days, and currently pursuing his postgraduate degree, respectively. Military veterans are the ideal mentors to young people as this helps to bridge the military-civilian divide. And we are going to learn just how they do this. And for those of you living in the Los Angeles area, there's one of these athletic fundraisers right in our backyard. On Sunday, September 11th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., volleyball beach tournament round robin with games, prizes, music on the Sorrento Beach Courts. We're going to hear much more about that with our two guests today outside of the founder, Michael, Oceanfront Park. So get your sand on and support an amazing cause. I am so honored to host three incredible people on today's 60th Small and Gutsy podcast episode, Points for Patriots. Points for Patriots founder, Michael Schumer, who was also a former student of mine at the USC Price Policy School, Navy veteran, screenwriter, playwright, editor, be prepared. She has a long bio and it's fabulous. Public Safety Reform and Oversight Commissioner for Santa Monica, VP Administration of the League of Women Voters of Santa Monica, California Democratic Party Assembly District 51 Delegate, California Democratic Party Veterans Caucus Executive Board Member, and employed by Activision. But in this context, most importantly, 
veteran mentor, Angela Scott, and Points for Patriots fellow, bringing her Westlake High School volleyball talent to this effort, Sheridan Schofield. So let's get started. Welcome, Michael, Angela, and Sheridan. And I'm going to start, Michael, with you just kind of laying the groundwork, and then I'm going to toss the ball to Angela and Sheridan to really talk us through how this program works the benefits, and most particular, getting folks to come to this fundraiser on September 11th. So Michael, you're on. Thank you so much for having us, Dr. Wyckoff. Um, I, can, I know I can speak on behalf of Angela and Sheridan saying that we're so excited to be here on the 60th anniversary of your, of your podcast. I wish it were the 60th anniversary, 60th episode, but wait, we hope we're around for 60 years. I love it, Michael. And call me Laura, please. We got our start, as you mentioned, and you, you uh, laid out our background so eloquently. We got our start on the 10th anniversary of 9-11 in New York. We started as a project. So for those nonprofit technocrats out there, we were not incorporated, nor were we a 501c3. We were a conduit to a larger organization called the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund. The Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund is the pioneer in targeting the invisible wounds of war, as they call it, post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury. Two issues that we may not be able to see casually, empirically ourselves, but they are definitely real and really important matters. I decided to marry my love of tennis and my passion for the military and for patriotism and civic engagement as ignited by the 9-11 anniversary with tennis because I was a competitive tennis player. And um, my favorite part about tennis was not really the, um, the competition or the sport, it was much, much more the, um, the friends I made. I really enjoyed spending time with those people. And so as a 14 year old, I thought, well, I don't have a car. I don't have any money. I don't have any resources, but I do have some human capital, right? I'm excited to do this. I know friends and family will do it with me. And I know that those fellow tennis players will do it. So we raised about 15,000 in an afternoon. All of it went to the Intrepid Fall and Heroes Fund, because again, we were not incorporated. We had uh, 15 quarts donated to us in West Hampton Beach, which was really generous. And we just strung it along and it became really fun and it caught fire. We did it for a couple summers thereafter on the island. And when I matriculated at the University of Chicago, the students are very uh, policy oriented, policy minded, thoughtful. However, the issue that I saw absent was that of veterans issues. We ended up establishing an office for military and veteran affairs at the provost's office. We now have dozens of veterans. In fact, some of them are veteran mentors at Points for Patriots, like Angela, who you'll meet. Um, she's also a veteran mentor, although she's at SC, fight on. It's, it's been a remarkable ride. Chicago is home to thousands, if not tens of thousands, of transitioning military veterans. And you have to remember at the time, President Obama had recently announced in 2012 that he was bringing the troops home from Iraq. So, you know, this is 18 months out. I really wanted to figure how can we best welcome, how can we make the south side of Chicago as friendly as possible, starting with the Hyde Park campus. So I figured, why don't we engage the people throughout Chicagoland, have them come down, have the CIA director who's coming through our Institute of Politics talk about public service careers, have the CEO of Bunker Labs talk about, which is like a huge, the national leader in entrepreneurship for veterans. It's a great nonprofit. Have the CEO there talk about veterans starting a small business. So we decided to, you know, blend in workforce development then I ended up graduating. We had that impact where we had the provost office and we have scholars, you know, veterans who now attend with predetermined spots with a scholarship that's waiting for them. So we had a real measurable impact. In fact, we went from one student veteran in 2014 to the U.S. News World and Report rating University of Chicago as the number one university in the country for uh, veterans um, as of 2021. Fast forward to 2020, it's covid um, I'm working in youth development and aging services in New York City, um, again, following my passion for nonprofit after a brief stint in financial services. We had raised 100000 for the vet, uh, for the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund, but I figured if we can manage our own budget, we can scale our impact because then we can have, you know, we can start to pay our own expenses. We can um, we can move and groove a little bit. We can be scaled. Well, and you have more control over what, what you want to do. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at that point, I figured, well, we're all shut inside and the world's moving to virtual, at least for the time being, what can I do? So I decided to create a, a youth development fellowship where it would be all virtual. 
and I decided to blend in three programmatic pillars that undergird the fellowship. So those pillars are wellness, connectedness, and social entrepreneurship. Starting with wellness, that was a natural fit for us. We had always been about athletic fundraisers because it's about getting out there, fitness, nutrition, having fun, getting the endorphins up. But the way that we incorporate wellness, specifically in the, fel- in the context of the fellowship, we have a certified yoga teacher teach 25 minutes of yoga and breathing. For connectedness, we have 25 minutes of mentorship. Is all of that online at this point? All of it's wow, online. That's cool. That's yep, great. Totally. Yeah. Thank you for, for asking. It's, it's twice a month, 75 minute sessions in, in 25 minute thirds. The second programmatic pillar is connectedness. That 25 minutes is veteran mentor to high school Patriot fellow connection. The veteran mentors that I had in my life, the mentor, vet, mentors who were veterans, never once said, you didn't serve, you can't sit at our table. It was always, this is how, this is how we can work together. This is how I'm going to be able to have your back. And so I was like, wait, so now I'm thinking a high schooler could really benefit from that, right? So they can start earlier than me and they can have a lifelong friend, a lifelong mentor. And it bridges that divide that I sort of opened with, which is really wonderful because we all have to work in tandem. Yeah, that's our mission to make those connections, to make those friendships. Um, the The third bit is social entrepreneurship. And that's where we teach very tangibly how to create an event. So I'm talking how to make a budget, what is a run of show, how to make a run of show, what's a project matrix, which is our version of a, a Gantt chart or an organizational you know, role clarity situation. The veteran mentor is not only a mentor, they're also, we, we think of them as project managers for their event plan. So for the, so for the 9-11 event that's coming up, all of that work is a culmination of those skill building uh, that Sheridan worked on with Angela really mentoring her through that process. Exactly, okay, exactly. Great. Now, to throw another wrench into the mix, Angela and Sheridan were so advanced that we tried something different. Typically, our fellowship runs nine months from about November to June-ish, you know, that time frame. And at the end of the, that, that programmatic fellowship, we then throw the event. So in other words, we would be having events, um, you know, in the July, August after a November start from the prior calendar year. But what I wanted to do, and we want to, social innovation is a big part of not only what we teach, but we want to practice. So I figured, wait, Angela and Sheridan are um, set to start the fellowship in November. What if I have them create an event by giving them a 10 week crash course, bringing them together, having them bond and having a lot of fun, and then bringing that energy into the environment that we're gonna have in November, where we're gonna be in five states up from two. We're gonna be in New York, California, Illinois, Texas, and New York, Illinois, Virginia. So let me just understand this. So in some way with this successful event on 9-11, it can serve as a model to kind of uh, jumpstart the folks who are starting in, in November and you can reflect back and talk about the experience, which I think is just magical. We're all about peer, peer-to-peer learning, right? So if Sheridan can go up there and, and share the lessons that she learned from Angela to the rest of the, the Patriot Fellows in Texas, in Virginia, you know, a funder once asked me, how do you bridge that not only military civilian divide, but that geographic divide? And I think the Patriot Fellows who are accepted into our program and apply are driven. They're looking to learn. So if we put um, Sheridan in a position to teach, right, and to learn from another fellow in a different state, let's say, that to me is an automatic bond. The veteran mentor to Patriot fellow connection, that's what we're all about. You know, I mean, I, I said to a couple of Patriot fellows, even if we do nothing else, that connection, that bond, connecting a military veteran with um, a civilian high schooler who doesn't have many post 9-11 veterans in their household, in their community, in their neighborhood, in their city, that, that's a big measure of our impact as well. There, there are four different areas where we spend our money, and that's what I'd like to conclude with and then hand it over to, um, to um, our real two MVPs, Sheridan and Angela. But um, so traditionally, the informal um, project, Points for Patriots, had given all its money to the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund. Now that we're able to have a bank account ourselves, 
we also created four different programs that I'm really excited to share, right? We've been talking a lot about the Patriot Fellowship. That's our flagship. That's how we raise our money primarily. We do have some individual gifts. We have a board of ambassadors, which is young professionals. If anyone out there is looking for a young professionals group, national, we have chapters in New York, Chicago, you know, DC area, we're, we're everywhere, LA, San Diego. Um, but the Patriot Fellowship is our bread and butter really at this point. Um, we have Spouse Connect, which is very similar to the Patriot Fellowship because it imbues connectedness, entrepreneurship and wellness, but it focuses on military spouses by giving military spouses $500 micro grants to join a six month, once a month fellowship where they get yoga connectedness and entrepreneurship. But um, it's very similar to the Patriot Fellowship, but their goal is to eventually launch or grow their business on um, digital online platforms. I think that's wonderful because you're building a community for them and they're often, hate to say this, the forgot, they're forgotten support. Exactly. And so totally. you're really bringing a, putting a spotlight on a group of folks who really need to be supported. You know, there are some great organizations out there, Hire Our Heroes, um, American Corporate Partners, Bunker Labs. We want to be additive to the, uh, you know, programs that are already benefiting military spouses. Two other programs I'd like to highlight. One of them was actually the brainchild of Angela. Um, we were spitballing, she and I, and I said, what do you think? What do you think? And where, where should we, you know, spread our money around? She's like, well, what about the kids of the spouses and the veteran mentors? And I'm like, that's brilliant. We came up with a Patriot Award, which is a mini scholarship, about two, three hundred dollars. We may go up to five hundred as we uh, grow. Um, for the kids of uh, veterans, um, could be K through 12, could be college, for them to have school supplies, athletic fees, really cool. Two more, uh, the Patriot Pet Pantry. We partnered with a local small business in Brooklyn called My Natural Pet. We're giving 20 $100 gift cards to veterans in the New York City area to be able to buy pet food because we figured that a lot of veterans use pets as companions. They're really loyal companions and they're, they're very therapeutic to have. But if they can't get the premium food that they deserve because of COVID, that's not cool. So we want to cover that and bridge that. The last one, of course, is our big, big partner, the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund. We're always going to get to them. Um, they they're, uh, have been a great mentor to us and a great big partner to us. So, And the Intrepid really works with uh, mostly um, post-traumatic stress and brain injury. So I just want that to be sort of, that's really their mainstay is the mental health component. Something that you said that was so powerful is there a lot of good organizations out there that do um, work with veterans and families and so i love that you said you didn't use this word but you're not duplicating services you're really complementing and going for niche areas that maybe haven't been thought of in the same way and you're taking an opportunity to allow people to fill their potential in both the business community, in their school community, if they get supplies, in the caring community around the pet aspect, and certainly still supporting the mental health piece. And I love that you can brainstorm with Angela, and we're going to hear from her in a second, to, to really create these avenues that, um, that are new and create a pathway that maybe haven't been thought of in this particular way. So it's a real complement to what you've created and the process by which you Un, you know, unleash these programs, which is really wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, you know, I've learned so much listening to the episodes on your podcast. I learned a tremendous amount in your, in your class, my favorite class at USC so far. Oh, so wow. Thank it's you. been a really great journey, but it's really the work of the veteran mentors and the Patriot fellows. Honestly, that runs the rest of it. Without them, we don't have the pantry. We don't have the awards. We don't have Spouse Connect, right? So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really cool. So Angela, the floor is yours. Thank you, Michael, so much. Angela, I've got a zillion questions for you. And everyone should go look up your bio when they look at the website, okay? Because you are just a rock star. If you think about it, and, and Michael, he is so humble too. I mean, he, you talk about rock star. I mean, Michael, he interned under uh, First Lady Michelle I, Obama. I saw that on his, on the web. I thought, do I mention that? Do I let That's him like mention that? Uh, me, oh, right? tell me about it. I was so jealous. I and I, you know, I never knew that because yeah. students don't always share yeah. all the details. So it's really it's so sweet. They don't. But I'm going to now reconnect through this process. So I feel really privileged Absolutely. to meet you, a fellow Trojan, yeah. and him, who's also a yep. fellow Trojan. So how? Where did? How did you? I don't even know where you want to start in terms of 
your passion about this program, how you and Michael got connected, and then walk us through the program and how it and how it works. Michael and I connected on LinkedIn. He saw that I was a I was a veteran, um, and that I had recently graduated under uh, at USC. We have the um, Masters for Business Veterans Program, right? So that's a unique. It's the only one in the nation and in the world created just for veterans. So we have an entire veteran cohort um, that goes through the class, and it's really a rigorous study of 12 months. So instead of taking the two years of that Master's of Business in Administration, we get it in 12 months. We do not sleep. <laughs> Again. No kidding. No <laughs> kidding. And you're, wor- and you're working and at the I'm same working. time. I'm working, and I was still also doing public service at the same time. But it was so well worth it at the end of the day. So well worth it, especially for the veterans who are transitioning out of the military and looking for their next, right? For myself, I was able to use a lot of the a lot of the uh, academic rigors within real life practicum, right? So I was able to apply it immediately in the things that I was doing at work. So Michael connected with me on LinkedIn. And he, uh, you know, told me about the program. And I'm in a place right now, you mentioned, where not only is my why in working with veterans through um, state and local measures, but also within my company, we have a very strong veterans organization. So I was, uh, and I'm the lead on community and social impact. So I'm always looking for ways um, to assist veterans and ways where veterans can work to assist fellow veterans in just, you know, um, the world as a whole. Because you you have to think about it this way. As a veteran, we are a servant leader. This is all we know. So I am really just operating on what I know, what I've known for all of these years, especially when you have that that dedication and that obligation, again, to leave the world in a better place than you found it. Because as someone who teaches leadership, you know, servant leadership is part of that. What folks don't recognize is that when you're committed to serving, you are a leader in essence. And so the fact that you can encapsulate that in a way that helps veterans see themselves in a positive light in service to others and still can make money, be productive, do all kinds of things that actually leave the world in a better place. I love that frame. It's a fabulous frame. You have more, what they say, skin in the game, right? Because yes, you do. If you look outside the box, you're not narcissistic in any way. It's all about everyone else. You know how they say it's not about you. No, it's yeah. about everyone else. And what am I doing? What am I doing to make sure that everyone else is benefiting, you know, how can I help? And I think that goes back to Michael's point. I think at the time of 9-11, everyone was in that place of, I want to do something. This, I think, pays homage, if you will, to 9-11 and to what we continue to do to serve our fallen heroes, both um, military and civilian. civilian. That's what's so beautiful about Mm -hmm. this program and the particular program that you you know that we're going to highlight today which really is the the mentor menteeship so i'm going to introduce sheridan in a second but i want i do want to hear then what i want to kind of go back to is not only your relationship as as fellow and mentor but how you guys got together and sort of where you were, you're a little ahead of the curve as, uh, as Michael pointed out earlier. So you're doing this fundraiser coming up, so on a highlight. So Sheridan, welcome. You are a, Hi, high, nice, nice to, meet, to you. meet you too. You're a high school student um, in Westlake and big volleyball player, I think, correct? That's my understanding. And I wanna know how you heard about this, how you got involved what what was your passion that that put you in the position you're in now to you know to basically launch a fundraiser under the wonderful direction and guidance of angela my dad and my grandfather they were both navy veterans so it was always kind of a part of my childhood just hearing like about it and my dad he went to king's point in new york so he 
would always tell me stories about that and then his time that he served after. So um, when one of my counselors at my school told me about Michael's program, I knew right away that it was something I wanted to be a part of because I wanted to have an impact on other people who weren't as fortunate as my dad and grandfather and who are still um, experiencing like psychological trauma from the war. So I knew I wanted to become involved right away as soon as I saw that. So how did you two get together, Angela and Sheridan? So Angela is the vet, Sheridan is the student, the fellow. And so how, walk me through this program. Well, Michael connected us. Um, I believe he, he reached out to us simultaneously because there's also an application process that Sheridan can go into detail on uh, where she fills out an application and I do too as far as how you pair what you think is going to be a good or perfect fit. And um, that's what he did. He, he paired us. But I mean, Sheridan, go ahead and explain like your, your process. Yeah, so um, it was an application online that I filled out. And I filled it all out and then Michael got back to me and he set up a Zoom meeting for us and he learned more about me so that then he was able to match me to a veteran mentor that would, was compatible. So then that's when Angela and I got connected together and then we've been having weekly Zoom meetings where we like connect and plan for the event. So great. And how, what do you think were those things that connected the two of you? Probably, I think we both just have a passion for helping. Right, Sheridan? It's just like, <laughs> and then I think as we uh, really started to talk and engage, we both really uh, think out of the box. Like we both, that's, that's something that, you know, is both inspirational. We're able to really uh, think synchronously, but out of the box at the same time. It's like, hey, let's look at this. Let's consider this as, again, you know, ways of, um, of, you know, just innovative ways for not just fundraising, but leading, but creating what that run a show would be like, as well as creating all of those other elements that go into it, right? And and I have to say, Sheridan is amazing. Not just a student leader, but a servant leader, that's Sheridan. If you think about it, you think she's still going to school full time and she's, you know, participating in this and she's playing a sport. That's a lot. That is a lot. I'm preparing for college. So. <laughs> All right, Sheridan, are you a senior this year? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I okay. am. So I've been. Yeah, yeah which is hugely time consuming these days. Yeah. I, I want to say the thing that strikes me the most, uh, and Angela, you really said this, is that um, I think you're both risk takers in terms of like trying things out and you're very open and when you brainstorm you're not shutting ideas down or needing to do something in sort of this rigid fashion it's the mm -hmm. opposite and I feel like you both believe that whatever you can do will get done you'll be able to do it yeah and I think that's definitely something that um inspired Michael like in both of us to give us this opportunity to have the event with only a little bit of preparation just the fact that we're both very determined and we don't say no to any, like we just keep going and push hard for what we want. So mm -hmm. I think that was definitely something important. And then at the same time, giving yourself grace if it doesn't always work out, but knowing that you tried and continue to try, right? Because I think sometimes, and even as women, as girls, we sometimes are our hardest critic. So we have to give ourselves that grace Yes, it didn't work out, but you keep powering through. Bring that, that grit and keep going. So I think, you know, he probably saw that in both of us, you know, just in initial conversations, right? And, and again, like you said, having been in the military, yes, you know, you're always going to face all of these uh, challenges, if you will, and you just power through. You just power through. And the same thing, just even in corporate world, even in academia it's like how do you handle stress right learning how to handle that learning how to power through learning how to understand too to lean to others you know what does team mean right there's no i in team so a lot of times you have to really work collectively and i think this is 
you know, this, if anything else, this Points for Patriots is also a clinic in um, collaboration building, right? In, in learning how to collaboration building, coalition building, learning how to also work with other organizations, learning who the stakeholders are and how to make sure that we can do fair trade-offs, you know, learning how to, again, show the stakeholders that we're all in this together. And at the end of the day, we all want the same goals. And so, you know, and like I said, and Sheridan has really learned that along the way. She brought a lot of it with her, mind you. And so she, again, has, is powering through all of that, you know, and she's coming out strong so that when we do actually start in November, because it feels like she and I have already started, but by the time we start in November and we have that retrospect meeting where well, she can now share her lived experiences these past 10 weeks with the other uh, fellows, right? The other, you know, teen fellows, the other seniors and juniors that are her age, she's sharing this experience. And if you think about this, it is serendipitous in that this is Mike, like she is Michael. She is this high schooler who had this passion and she is the example of that for this generation. And that's what Points for Patriots is. So tell us all, because this is what I want to push for, tell us all about, for those living in the LA area or nearby, there's a fundraiser coming up uh, in Santa Monica, and it is a volleyball uh, round robin, and I want to hear all the pieces. So share, share away. Yeah, it's in Santa Monica on September 11th. This for me in the past on 9-11, I've always kind of wanted to do something to commemorate the event, but there was never anything in my local community that there was to do. So when Michael suggested that we have this fundraiser on 9-11, I thought it was perfect because I know especially uh, like the younger generation, like myself, who weren't even alive for 9-11, we still kind of want to be involved and supportive in our community. So that's why when we thought of a beach fundraiser, it's perfect because it's all ages. So we're having it then. And then, yeah, all money raised goes to um, veterans' families and veterans who are suffering from um, like post-traumatic stress disorder from their time at war. And so it's it starts at 10 a.m. People should probably get there a little early. It's on, um, what's the address again? You know, the address is Sorrento Beach Courts. And so the address is 930 Oceanfront Walk. Great. Perfect. Uh, and so tell me how what the how the rob, round robin works. How do people sign up? Can people just show up if they don't play to cheer people on? And what else is going on? Even yeah. if you don't want to play, but you want to show up and, and cheer folks on, that is wonderful. Um, we will have day of registration. And if anyone's listening right now, it's points for patriots dot org and then it's uh forward slash events forward slash volleyball santa monica and you know you'll you'll find it from there but again you can share it online as well but we would love for folks to sign up we have a uh, veterans play for free and then there is and it, this is a fundraiser so there is a cost associated with um civilians who also would like to play as well and it's i believe it's sixty dollars um but again, going to a well-worthy cause. And um, with the round robins, um, I'll let Sheridan, because she's our volleyball uh, <laughs> hero expert. on here. Yeah, yes, she's the yes, expert. Too. Okay, so Sheridan, are you are you playing? Angela, are you playing? Um, I haven't quite decided, but Sheridan is going to. <laughs> so that's great. So how does the round, how are you setting up the round robin? And then there are there other, I think that I saw on your flyer, uh, games and prizes and I didn't yeah. know what else. So yeah, we have. I'll let uh, Sheridan talk about the round robin, and then I'll go into the prizes and all of that. So I think that one big thing that we wanted to try to make sure didn't happen is people felt like if they didn't have a full team that they couldn't play. So we're um, we kind of have it open right now, so that if you want to sign up in a team of four, you can, or if not, you can just sign up as an individual player, and then we can add you to the team. Perfect. And so the round robin works with just, um, so we'll see how many teams we have and then we'll place them for pool play. And then depending on like the results for that, we'll set it up for playoffs so that then we can have a 
second and third. So yeah, it's definitely going to be fun. And there's some pretty cool prizes for the winners. So that's always exciting yeah. too. I'm hoping that it's not a heat wave on that day because we have, we're having one. Yeah, it's actually not hot as I know. Really. Hopefully, but at least you're right on the beach. You could like go right, jump in the ocean. Right. You know, that's what I'm saying. You got that exactly. You have the the Pacific Ocean breeze right there to you, and and you know we'll have water and beverages and things like that as well. But I mean, it, and we have it set up at a really good you know time. You know from. 10, I believe to yeah, one. Perfect. So yeah, yeah, that's going to be, you know, that'll be right in the midst because three o'clock is when it gets really hot. So we're trying <laughs> to have our event over by then. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. And so, uh, as I said before, people can just show up and support the organization, yes, the people who are playing and that. have fun. And I imagine you'll have a lot of people just hanging around, you know, just enjoying I mean, it. It's Santa Monica. It's a wonderful day at the beach. It's a Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. Folks will be out there for brunch anyways. We're like, hey, just stop on by, you know, just and play. I honestly, I'm looking forward to seeing Sheridan and her parents play. <laughs> oh, I love it. I didn't even ask that. So you both your parents yeah, are playing as well? My sister who also played volleyball, um, she graduated like a year ago. So it's like that are playing together. Yeah, I we're pretty it. excited. I think they're going to be the team to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys may get the prize. Yeah, I know. They're going to definitely be the team to beat. All right, have you guys been practicing? That's no, what I want to know. Not as much. We have <laughs> played together in the past as like just um, like against each other mm -hmm. for beach volleyball, but we haven't done any practices together. So I love it. I think it sounds like so much fun and such a great cause. And on a day that is so solemn for so many, you've, you're really converting it, especially to educate younger folks who, as you pointed out, weren't even alive during that time. Yes. It's taking a, a tragedy and really turning it into something where there can be opportunities for joy still, celebration, memor memories and legacy. And I just think that's, uh, I think it's remarkable and I'm excited for you all because you really had to do this as a crash course. And Angela, you might be used to this because your master's program was a crash course and military. But I, ha I have to give you both credit that you kind of jumped in with both feet and said, and I think you're right. I think Michael saw the determination, the ability to, you know, as you said, grit and grace. I love it and plow forward and say, we're going to do this. Absolutely. And Lori, I, I would be, I would be remiss if I didn't say that we are going to have, um, for the entertainment and it's been, <laughs> not like it's huge, but it's powerful in what we're doing. Um, we are, we have partnered with jazz hands for autism. And so oh, we I have, love it. yes, mm -hmm. yes. So we have a person by the name of Cecilia Malone, who is, going to be I believe she's doing the uh, the national anthem that's beautiful now I just think the way you all think and engage and collaborate with like-minded folks who are really there to make the world a better place which you said earlier Angela is so true and it's being in service to others you're still in service to yourself and you want to take care of yourself and the well-being aspect is important but you don't need to forget uh, your fellow person next to you. And that's what you're, that's what this is all about. And for those who, particularly for those who have served, who are in need, I just think you're, you're all rising above to be able to support, which is what we all want when we're in need. So I, I can't tell you how honored I am to host you on Small and Gutsy and how um, amazing I think this program is and how you've dedicated um, you know, a piece of your life to making this happen, whether you're a fellow or a mentor or you're a participant in any of these or your recipient, all of that um, matters. This episode is sponsored by The Intrinsic Group, my boutique management consulting firm specializing in guiding organizations to leverage talent, optimize processes, and to ensure the organization's narrative is aligned with their culture. If you'd like to sponsor an episode, please reach out to us. For those of you who, who do know my podcast, I usually have a round of quick and gutsy questions toward the end. And I know Michael, still being a grad student, had to run off to class, so he won't be able to answer these. But you all get to represent Points for Patriots. 
in my quick and gutsy round and um and they're fun so just have fun with it okay you'll each get a response if you want one so the first question is what is at the top of your wish list for points for patriots but the answer can't be money or funding so what's at the top of your wish list for points for patriots to carry it with me past like just this year I definitely want it to be something that I'm still doing in college and I'm bringing to whatever area I decide to go to college just to spread awareness and hopefully build the organization. I love that. I love that. And that's what we mean by legacy. You, you just did the perfect example, Sheridan. Okay, Angela, what about you? I think, yeah, just to piggyback on what uh, Sheridan said, for me also would be to continue working uh, with Michael on building out these programs right? Because he has some amazing programs. And it's like, let's, in continuing that legacy, let's build out these programs. And I know we're looking to expand to, we like to get all 50 states. So help him in that way, in connecting veterans with civilians across all 50 states. So that's what I would love to help assist with as well. It is such a fabulous wish and a fabulous goal that you have. So if you were to think of a song that describes points for patriots, what would it be? I see you laughing, Angela. I literally, like you said, I laughed because for some reason I thought of Diana Ross and Ain't No Mountain High Enough, right? Yes, <laughs> I, I love it. That's one of my favorites. And it so describes your relationship and what we right, talked yeah. about. I love it, great, fabulous. And I love her, so that's easy. That's great. Yeah, Sheridan, what about you? We'll get the younger generation now to say, okay. I think mine would probably be um, Don't Stop Believing. Yeah. Oh. When, when we first started, like, it seemed like such a big goal, and it was just a crash course. But I, I think that through Angela and stuff, I've just, like, become a lot more comfortable with it and seeing that, like, if you believe in something and you put enough effort into it, like anything's possible. Oh my gosh. If that isn't a, I, I, you got it. That, I mean, I you know, that that, that, if that isn't an endorsement for your mentorship, Angela, I don't know what is. I'd like to have you be my mentor, frankly. You know, that's beautiful. And it's so true. Both of those fabulous cho choices. So what makes Points for Patriot gutsy? Anytime you go grassroots, you know, and turn it into something like this. Like Michael pivoted from a passion and made it into what it is today. So that grassroots approach into transformative change makes it. Better. Yeah, I agree with um, with Angela. Just like the fact that it, like especially in California, since most of the events had been in um, New York, we kind of started from the very like we didn't really have many resources either like in this area where Michael had kind of been building them in New York for a while. So I think just starting from the bottom and tr trying to build it up is really what, what I would say. Yeah, it's gutsy because you really had to learn, not just learn the steps in theory, but you had to put them into practice simultaneously for this crash course and now this event. So you were, you know, learning while you were, you were doing while you were learning, which is incredible. Exactly. It's, a, it's a great way to learn, but it also is gutsy. Uh, what is something that outsiders or maybe even a few insiders don't know about Points for Patriots? I would say that when I was just reading the website and trying to learn more about it when I was applying, I didn't realize how much um, of an impact, like, the mentor and the fellow have on each other. I think as they go through the process, it's really like you're learning, but not learning like I do in school, more of learning through examples and like actually working with hands-on and all of that. Sheridan nailed it. The mentor, and mind you, I've participated in mentorships and I love having a mentor in my life. I have several on personal and professional levels, but never in this type of, a magnitude where we're actually building out a fundraising event that's going to create uh, some form of change, you know, uh, whether it's generational change or impactful change. That That's the piece, that's the component that I think makes this unique and special is having, doing this type of mentorship where we're working together and she is also like, 
the mentee is really, like you said, taking that crash course in creating an event from end to end, start to finish, and learning all of those nuances in between. Mm -hmm. You don't Mm -hmm. get that too often in a mentorship. Typically, mentorships are like the type where, like I said, if it's a a personal one, you have like that accountability partner that's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you should take that course or no, don't take that course, you know, whatever. But in this kind of thing, we're building something. We're creating something that is going to benefit others. You don't get that in a mentorship. You really don't. Yeah, it's really true. It's so true. It's really an active, it's an active mentorship with an outcome. Yeah, it really is. Uh, So if you could get one celebrity or influencer to endorse or talk about points for patriots, who might that be? I'm going back to the person who helped Michael on his path, uh, former first lady, Michelle Obama. She is the one who kickstarted his whole process in this, in this points for patriots. That would be huge. I mean, I'm always thinking big and that would be just amazing. <laughs> amazing. She needs to make a guest appearance or send her a flyer. I don't know if she loves volleyball, but it doesn't matter. That flyer needs to go in her mailbox. That would be amazing. And even after the fact to come and sort of celebrate and talk about what you created, it would just be spectacular. Uh, yeah, well, he's got an in. I'd work through Michael and see if you can send her a flyer. Sheridan, did you, did anyone come to mind for you? Uh, yeah, I would say Oprah came to my mind, although it's a little bit cliche. I just think that everything that she stands for, that kind of is also embodied through points for a patriot. So definitely that. Any last comments or thoughts that you all have? Um, I just wanted to say thank you again for having us on your podcast. I think it meant a lot to come on and be able to share like our stories, but also um, just like learn more about your podcast and hopefully connect with a larger audience in LA too. Yeah, that's my hope too. Uh, Angela, any last comments or thoughts? Uh, <laughs> no, I shared it. I just love her. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yes, I mean, I'm just echoing what she said. Uh, thank you for allowing us to, um, to share this story, to share this fundraising event and share a way that folks can join in on creating change, right? There, there's so many opportunities, whether they come and play beach volleyball or whether they just uh, join in as a future fellow or assist in any of the Points for Patriots events from the Spouse Connect to the Pet Pantry. There's so many ways to assist. and. I'm just happy that we were able to come on and talk about all of them. So am I. I want to thank the two of you and Michael, who had to run off to class. I got to give him, you know, yeah. some points for doing that because that's, you know, <laughs> rather than skipping. Exactly. Uh, and he wasn't going to exactly. give up the opportunity. And I just, I love yeah. your collective energy. I love the program and what it stands for. I love oh. the grassroots nature. I love the yeah. grit, grit and the grace that you plow through mm-hmm. things. I love the determination. Mm -hmm. Um, I really want to thank you and I want to thank you not only for participating in this program, Sheridan, for you being legacy, Angela, for you and all you do for your community and for being a vet and for your service, both in the state of California, locally and nationally, because you have really been there and your orientation to the to mentoring people is doesn't I, I it is this is not a light thing. This is a big commitment on your part. And the, for those who have been mentors, it's huge. And Sheridan, for you to have connected so beautifully, I know you will carry this forward. I want everyone to come to the 9-11 event in Santa Monica, who's local or maybe they'll just fly in for it. We want to get Oprah and Michelle Obama to show up. That would really, you know, change everything. Uh, And I want uh, for in closing, I want you to share uh, just the website again so that folks know how to get on, know how to either sign up. And if you didn't sign up and you decide last minute to come and join, please do. Um, you, You know, donate would be amazing because the money goes to an incredible cause helping veterans in need. And you can see all of those programs on the website. So how do folks get on the website and get in touch? 
Okay, yeah, so that's point, P-O-I-N-T-S, for F-O-R, Patriots, P-A-T-R-I-O-T-S, dot org, forward slash event, forward slash volleyball, V-O-L-L-E-B-A-L-L, hyphen Santa Monica. So that's points for Patriots dot org events volleyball Santa Monica. That is the way that you come on and make a change. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, please share it with your friends. Give us some stars and write a review on wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're interested in sponsoring a small and gutsy episode to keep it going, please reach out to me or buy us a coffee at www.buymeacoffee.com backslash small and gutsy. Just an FYI for those of you who might want to be a small and gutsy patron, we just released our Patreon site with some really fun first edition small and gutsy merchandise. So check us out to support this effort at patreon.com backslash small and gutsy. Of course, we can't take responsibility outside of our own vetting of the organizations we interview, meaning we encourage you to do your own due diligence and research them as well. I want to thank my partners in this endeavor, the Intrinsic Group, the volunteers, my co-producer, sound engineer and composer, the amazing Pavel Franson, Nate Addy for the exceptional logo, and all the friends and family who have guided and inspired me. A very special thank you to my biggest champion, without whom I could not have created this project, my very best friend and a true sounding board. Thanks, Mark Whitkoff. Thanks for being there. From small and gutsy to big with impact, I'm Laura Whitkoff, and thanks for listening.